Hey guys, and welcome back. Uh, this week we're going to be trying something a little bit different. We're going to work on some pet portraits. Uh, so first, let me preface everything by saying this video was shot just a couple of days after this last after the last one. Uh, I'm still recovering, getting my voice back. I had a COVID and. I was left with a, a dry ongoing cough and if I talk too much, it just, it works it up and I just start coughing and coughing and coughing. So like in the last video, I didn't talk a whole lot. I didn't talk hardly at all after the intro. Uh, this one, um, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more as I need to, but for the most part, I'm probably going to try and stay a little quiet uh, just to let you know. So pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, hopefully it, it makes sense uh, and, and I'll put some uh, information in the description. And if you have any questions, obviously, just feel free to ask. So, as always, um, I work with uh, Kraken Fine Arts. Uh, I'll put their description and information in the uh, description below. Thank you so much for uh, supporting this channel, uh, as some of you already have. Uh, there's some of that information in the description as well if you'd like to contribute and help support this channel. Paint supplies are not cheap. And always... Um, give this video a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe, and share it with someone who you think might benefit from these fundamentals. I'm Kendall Stump, and welcome to The Stump Project. Okay, so I've already, well, I primed my canvas with some uh, yellow acrylic, just to give me a background color. This isn't meant for, uh, it's not going to seep through, well, I mean, it's not going to mix with uh, any of the oil paints that I put on the canvas. It's just something that might seep through uh, some of the paint that doesn't cover the canvas entirely, which can be a really cool effect. Um, so I, I just prime that, let that dry. I put a coat of liquid on it. Uh, right now the liquid is wet. And when, as I apply uh, the paint, is the liquid will act as an accelerant to help it dry faster. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sketch out. Um, what I would want to do so I can get my composition, which is probably something we need to talk about in the future, composition and layout. So, when you do a composition, we'll talk briefly about it here, I guess. If you divide your canvas up into thirds, like a big tic-tac-toe board, okay? Your points of interest are generally gonna be around one of those four points. So today I'm doing, I'm going to do a cat portrait so I'm going to put, it's going to be facing to the left. So I'm going to put it on the right. So just take some time and sketch out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just using some raw umber, diluted with a little bit of liquid. You're just looking for the shape, so for the form. Just like that. I didn't like that. It was too small. So we'll try to make it a little bit bigger. Again, I'm using the same idea. I want it to be, just put out some structure lines here. I guess I'm just trying to get ahead of myself. Just a little structure. This is how. There, then we'll have you know, whiskers and everything coming out. Probably clear out here, maybe not quite that far. Out here. Maybe some upper whiskers here. So now my my volume is kind of figured out. I'll, now I will try to sketch this out a little bit more to give myself a little bit more to work with.
when you're doing this, you just want to pull out shapes and look for landmarks. So if I'm looking for the nose here and I can key in where I want the some of the shadows to be based on its general location and relative position to other things like these shadows here and the paint markings in the face. And again, these are all just rough, just rough sketch marks. Uh, you'd probably be painting over all of this at some point, uh, just to kind of give yourself a roadmap of, of how you gonna put this together. Okay, I mixed up some browns, uh, oranges, uh, using. Uh, Permanent red, permanent yellow, some burnt sienna, a little bit of green, and I'm going to start by putting my darks in first. And as I step down, I'm not um, I'm not wiping off my brush. I was going right in and I'm mixing it into my next color. I want to maintain that homogeneousness uh, through my color palette. So one of the first things that I'm doing here is I'm blocking in the color. As you can see that 
um, just, I'm just picking out shapes and highlights and color patterns um, at, and then once I'm done with that I will go in and continue to re refine the details a little bit um, keeping watch of my color value adding adding whites and highlights as I get closer to the or adding whites as I get closer to the highlighted areas and I'm not too worried about the edges just yet because I want to put the I want to put the background in uh, before I start worrying about about that Okay, so that's a little time-consuming uh, putting in the putting in the background like that. Just a solid color, but it's relatively easy. Um, I changed up I changed up the uh, the color flavor a little bit. Every now and again, adding a little bit of green and a little, little bit of uh, orange and red and blue, just to kind of change up that that flavor just a little bit. Although on camera it probably looks really, really just all dark and everything, and, and that's fine. Uh, in in real life, you'll get a little bit of a variance, and it just it will just help it. It'll just make it work. Okay, so now we can start working on our edges a little bit, and it's just going to be just some subtle strokes. Get some ghosting right along the edge. Just blend this a little bit. Let it feel shaggy, let it feel like fur. Pick up too much paint on your brush of the dark paint, go ahead and brush it and wipe that off. You don't want to drag too much. You want to start to pull some of the shadows. So if you do get some paint, dark paint on your brush, just go ahead and start working them in the the dark the the, the background color into the shadows of your of your painting and that's just going to help um, pull together the the color temperature and the uh, and the light sources of your of your painting just to make it look a little bit more fluid when you pull pull in the in the direction that you want the fur to be going very similarly to to how you would do uh, the lay of the land in uh, with landscapes
and just use different brushes to kind of get different different feathering just remember to uh, when you keep your brush clean when you do this though and I may go over this when this dries a little bit with a little bit of glazing I want to darken this up right here just a little bit more than what I'm getting right now then you can scratch off you want to get some of those fine whiskers when you scratch off make sure you wipe off your knife though And thin down some white paint just to go over some of these just to make them a little bit more vibrant there so now you have a nice variety and that's pretty much how you paint you can keep on continue to refine this as you wish um, blending out uh, the transitions between some of the highlights and some of the some of the uh, the rest of it but I, I prefer my style would be to segregate the highlights and the and the shadows uh, with the brush strokes like this. I really like it. Uh, like I said, I'll probably once this dries, I'm going to go into some of this darker area and just kind of darken it up just a little bit, let it let it blend right off into the background a little bit more. Um, and yeah, uh, so I hope you guys like this. Uh, if you want to see more of these pet portraits, um, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. And in the meantime, keep practicing, uh, create something awesome. You can find inspiration anywhere. Just don't be afraid to look. Thanks for watching.